giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with PTC. PTC currently has the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on where you can earn a share of $7,000 for your team by designing a robot that helps solve a current world problem at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. And by Striker. Striker is looking for first and fun fans to join their team because they want to help support you in your first journey. Help develop solutions for current and future problems like the new emergency relief bed. Get details on how to join their team at careers.strykr.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everybody. Reporting for first updates now on today's Shallow Dive, I'm Tegan. Uh, meet our guests. Today we have Alex and Aiden, so I'm just going to let them jump right into it and introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm Team 48's kind of do-it-all guy, uh, but primarily I am our driver and strategist, uh, and I'm an official contributor for fun. Hi, I'm Aiden. Uh, I'm part of the drive team at one. 48 and I'm most uh, it's my second year on the team awesome so today essentially as we have been doing with all the shallow dives here on first updates now we're going to be asking some questions we're going to have some cool video clips uh for the viewers to see again twitch chat if you have any questions feel free to ask them we'll try and get you your answers uh so I guess we can start off kind of broad uh at the t beginning where how does your build season start uh on team 48 uh, so 48, what we do is we meet on kickoff, uh, and after we start kickoff, uh, kickoff day is not anything about how does the robot do it. It's all what do we want to do, what's important, what's illegal, you know, getting down all the rules. Uh, that's the first day. That's how we start our season every year. Um, and then the very next day, Sunday, uh, we meet in the morning. We ask um, all the students, bring a drawing of what you think a robot that's competitive for this year would be. Um, and then after that, we start talking all day. We don't leave until we have an idea of what the robot will look like and what our strategy for the season is. Uh, so this year, we sat down. We said, you know, the trenches, the shorter path, we want to be able to go through there. Uh, but we also want to be able to shoot high. Um, grabbing from the floor is important. Um, if you can have a hop or two, that would be nice. Um, so that falls into our wants category, not necessarily our needs. Um, after that, we meet every day. The first two weeks of our build season are usually prototyping, uh, getting old drive bases just fitted with prototypes, driving them around, spinning intakes up. Uh, this year we took our 2012 old shooter from our practice robot um, to uh, and retrofitted it with some uh, Falcons and Fairlanes to be able to shoot power cells. Uh, so we did a lot of prototyping with that. Um, and then intake, so we practiced uh, prototyping an intake. Um, after that, it goes all straight into CAD, so we'll CAD our robot and then uh, manufacture it. So that's basically it for our season. So for looking at the game, I guess, as a whole, something that I know when you do prototyping, there's a lot of elimination, a lot of um, different ideas that come, especially, I don't know how large your team is, which feel free to share, but it's you know, there's a lot of things you have to kind of narrow down. So how do you go about making your robot decisions uh, specifically? Aiden, do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah. What we do is we uh, narrow it down. We usually, like, uh, show off all these prototypes ideas, and we kind of just work together as a team to come to an agreement on something. And we also uh, talk to our head engineer to make sure that whatever the prototype is, we can actually do physically. And, and we also... Uh, even though we have many ideas and many people come in and give us prototype ideas, we also just we we try to work together and uh, figure out what do we think will be best for the the team and the robot as a whole. 
And how do you guys integrate, uh, let's say, things like Chief Delphi? I know as soon as kickoff happens, there's a million threads that appear. Uh, there's also, like, other ideas that you can get, you know, newer students versus more experienced students. Kind of things like weeding out the ideas. Do you prototype everything? Or are you guys more of a kind of split into a few actually, you know, what you would consider plausible uh, and then go from there? Yeah, so we never really prototype anything that isn't we can do on our own. So everything is built within our resources. That's something we try and keep steady. Uh, so why would we build a, you know, hyper complex serializer when we know we can't effectively make that? So this year it was um, a mechanum based intake. We know we can make a simple intake with mechanum wheels that centers into a big shooter column. Uh, so that was something we prototyped. Um, we read Chief Delphi, see what other people are doing, you know, like this year with the, the tall robot versus short robot. Uh, what do you want to do? What are the pros? What are the cons? Um, so we wanted tall robot just so we could shoot over. Um, but the trench, it was just, it was worth so much more in time when we sit down and we do calculations for time. Uh, so we want to be able to do that. So that's when we kind of got the idea, you know, how do we do both? How do we go under the trench? How do we shoot high? Um, and then we kind of looked at our 2012 robot, which kind of was low and t tall at the same time. Um, that's when we got the arm tilt idea. So the actual arm would pivot with a pneumatic, drop down, and then crawl under the trench and then pop back up, and then it would be um, max height. And tell me a little bit more about your uh, manufacturing capabilities and what kind of like things you are able to build in-house. Do you have a machine shop? I know you work out like you are a school team. Do you work out of a school? Do you have a separate location? Uh, all of those things. Yeah, Aiden, do you want to take some of that? Yeah, uh, we do. We have a machine shop where we do do most of the work, but we also have uh, sponsorships and other people that we work with that can do special specialized uh, parts that we need. Uh, stuff like welding and other things like that. We do have a CNC machine that we use to do most of the CNCing on the robot, and but we also do most of the manufacturing at the school, and we do outsource for when we need specialty items. Yeah. So if you look at the video playing on screen right now, you can kind of see all the the plates on the big on the sides of it. Those plates are too big for us to machine ourselves. So we have a, a water jet sponsor that goes in, and it can do any plate that we throw at it. We just give them the files, and it'll cut it. Um, In-house, we have just a basic bridge port, you know, two mills, two lays, uh, Tormach, CNC, uh, and we have the Mark IV, Mark II, so we use that a lot. Um, so, you know, water jet stuff for water jet for pieces we can't do ourselves, Tormach for stuff we can do in-house, uh, use the bridge fort for any piece that isn't super precision, and then 3D printer for 3D printer. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And okay, so tell me a little bit more about your robot. And specifically, I want to talk uh, about something unique about your robot. Tell me about your drivetrain uh, for this season. Uh, yeah, so as we were approaching Orlando, we got to the point where we were um, looking for ways to not be as tippy and create that omni wheel effect without using omni wheels, because that was around the time that big thread popped up around, you know, watch out for omni wheels on the steel bar, they break. Uh, so this was one of those late night ideas where we were like, what do we do to fix this? Um, and then we just looked up at our old totes and we found lunacy wheels um, and they worked phenomenally. So we just put some hubs in there, started throwing them on the drivetrain in whatever spot worked the best. Um, the video right now shows them in the back, uh, but for the competition, we actually moved them to the front. Uh, right now it's going over the two by one bars, actually three by one. Um, and then it just drove over perfectly fine. It spins fine, doesn't tip. And it goes right over the bar. Just doesn't that's break. really awesome. Doesn't break. That's all you really need. So before we yeah. get too much more into more questions about your robot functions and works, I am going to cue on Tyler really quickly uh, for our first ad of the segment. Yeah, we're going to talk about our friends at uh, PTC once again who are doing the Robots to the Rescue Challenge. Uh, that's coming up really quick, guys. If you have not signed up for this yet, they are uh, nearing 500 signups, I think, uh, which is super cool. And this is an opportunity for your team to earn some funds for next season. Now think about this. 
There are a lot of businesses that are currently impacted. A lot of teams might be missing some opportunities for fundraising next year. Here's a great one for you to uh, submit a robot design that tackles a challenge. You can make it whatever you want. Uh, you're going to design it in Onshape, which is a free program for you to download. It is completely web-based, which means you don't need a workhorse computer. You can do this on a Chromebook. You can do this on a workhorse if you want to, but it is available pretty much anywhere. And that's what I love about Onshape so much. And uh, once again, everything's through the cloud as well, too. So go ahead and check this out, onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue, and that's your opportunity. Submit by May 15th your design, and they're giving away over $7,000 to your team's account that you can use towards registration or other fees that your team may incur. So make sure you check that out. Once again, onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. on shape is going to be a lot uh something we look forward to to using in the future um just in general industry so now we are back talking about the robots now tell us we see the arm i see it doing that tell me other things about like how your robot functions how it works uh what you prioritized uh and how you made it happen yeah aiden do you want to go more into how the shooter works yeah the shooter works by um we have uh we have an intake with like uh, I don't know these these rubber. Alex, what are they called? What are they called again? Uh, the, just polycord belts. The polycord belts, and we use those to help uh, pull in that pull in the balls and put them inside the shooter. And uh, sometimes we don't want them to get jammed, so sometimes you'll have to uh, actually like drop the balls down and pull them back up to keep them to keep them in line and stuff like that. And we also have on the top of the shooter, a really high speed. Uh, we actually have our uh, one of the Neo motors up there, one Neo motor just for the shooter. And it actually, we had to put a cover over where the gears are because it became a safety hazard because of how fast it would spin. We It would shoot out pretty fast and pretty consistently at the, at the rate of speed we had it. Yeah, so we started with a Neo and then we went up to two Falcons just to cr uh, create some uh, less current. So there's two Falcons on there, and there's a cover over the shooter belt because that wheel goes at 10,000 RPM, and that's pretty fast. So we wanted to make sure if something ever happens with that belt, it's locked in, nobody gets hurt. Uh, so the two Falcons are geared up from the natural speed just with a belt and pulley. And then the we, we started with blue Fairlands, but we switched to Colson's, uh, four-inch Colson's, because they have those little grooves on the ends. So it helps give a little bit of centering as you shoot it, so your balls go generally in the same shot. Yeah, I'm just taking a look at it now. Uh, it looks like you're able to shoot close, too. Like, if you're right on that, uh, I forget what it's called, but the shooting triangle, uh, which is definitely something I know a lot of teams, at least up here, either could do really well or not at all, uh, just by getting the right angle. So how was your shooter hood? Was it uh, multi, like, was it different angles? Was it um, Was it more of, like, a single... Single angle, did the arm pivot? Kind of how did you align yourself based on how far away you were from the goal? Uh, so there was just two, one cylinder for the shooter hood. So shooter hood was two positions. Uh, one position got us from the wall, which is that shot. Um, and then the other one is the hood extended, where we just change RPM and we can shoot from the front of the trench or the back of the trench. Cool. And so... The season, the finite recharge season. Yes. Uh, tell us about what competitions uh, 48 was going to attend this year. Uh, we were going we were gonna to go to Buckeye, uh, Orlando, and Rocket City. And of those, which ones, I guess, each of you personally, I think if I had the chance to go to Orlando, I'd be pretty hyped. But which ones were you guys most looking forward to? Uh, I was looking forward to Orlando. This was kind of our, like, senior trip one. So, um it, it got us down there. We are, Our head mentor, actually, that was his regional he wanted to go to. He wanted to take us to go see NASA. Um, and then one of our mentors um, came up with the idea of going to Universal. So we actually fundraised to go to Universal Studios. So the whole team went there. Um, and then we went to go compete there. I was looking forward to going and seeing 179, you know, 180, 233, all those teams you, you'd love to see at Orlando. I, Next yeah. year. I just want to jump in and ask real quick uh, for Orlando – that was one of the events that you guys were literally part of the driver's meeting, and that's when it got canceled, right? Uh, yeah. So can you talk about that a little bit more? Uh, what was that? How, how did that impact you? What was that like? And then, I mean, did you guys just go home right away, or did you actually get to go do something? 
Uh, so the when it happened, we were all in the drivers meeting. You know, this was all unexpected. Uh, so we got there. We were just waiting for you know drivers meeting, just simple stuff. Uh, so they cancel it. Obviously, everyone's upset. So we start packing up the pit. You know, getting out. But it was either find a way to fly back home for really expensive and trying to communicate with airlines in the middle of the pandemic, which was not easy or wait it out and take the flight we already had. So we started talking to our school district and they were just like, if you can get out, get out, but take the way that you already have home. So uh, we ended up staying the next few days. Uh, we went to SeaWorld with the leftover money we had and we just hung out at the hotel and had a good time, turned it into a vacation. Well, it's good to make lemonade out of lemons, to say the least. Yes. Um, so some other questions, more team logistically. Uh, how did your team go about fundraising? Uh, this is more a little bit of like stuff you do in the off season, but at the same time, it's important if you want to go to Florida. Um, like what, what does 48 do in terms of fundraising uh, during your off season? For fundraising, we do a lot uh, with the school. Like our school has a spirit shop in the school, which all the funds go right back into the into the robotics program. So that's one of the ways we raise money through the season: going to football games, uh, selling our 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 school's uh, merchandise and stuff like that. So we get so we get that money back. But we also do community events too. Like this year, we had a pancake breakfast and raffle too, which was a really big big success or success for us. It was the first year we did it. Uh, it was a big event. Tons of people came. We had a raffle going on, so that was fun too. And then we also do think we also do like uh, sub fundraisers too. So for Super Bowl Sunday, we made subs. People bought them, and we delivered them to them for Super Bowl Sunday. And that was a big fundraiser we had too. And we've also sold. We've also done other fundraisers like sell school mugs and stuff like that, which. Uh, which was really good too. And we do a lot of stuff in the community, like going to parades. We set up the spirit shop in our, in the, our town square to um, help raise money and bring and show what our team is all about. Awesome. Uh, so we did get a question coming in from chat from the ultra Corgi asks, what expectations come with being the best of the best in Ohio and what unique practices does 48 have that allows you to meet every single year? or allows you to, like, meet those expectations every year? Uh, so Ohio is really defense-heavy. It's one of those regions where you look at it and you go, wow, you know, you watch those events and you realize just about every alliance has a defender. Uh, so defense is something we always build our robots for, to be able to do it and to be able to withstand it. Um, and then being able to know how to play against it, how to play around it. And then with coming coming around how to play in Ohio and how we meet that every year, it's just drive practice. We we start practicing in the fall. Uh, we we either host or we go to a local um, off season to get new people trained or people even more practice. Um, we get ready for those, and then just go into the competition knowing that we're probably going to be a target if we know we're good, or if we're playing good. That makes a lot. So that's drive practice then for you guys starts in the fall. And how do you really make uh, those drive practices effective? I know something that a lot of teams can have is if you have a defender, or sorry, not a defender, a driver who's in grade 12, uh, kind of carrying on that legacy is a little bit more difficult uh, from year to year. So how do you really make sure that that's integrated? Uh, you're, you've kind of got like a contingency plan for when your drivers graduate. Uh one of the ways we do this is our drive coach. Actually, we actually have to uh, study, make sure we know the game, take uh, take a test to know uh, what the game is before we even get to touch the controls and stuff like that. But then after that, after you go through that that barrier of getting through and uh, progressing through that, we do unique drive practices. We switch out members. We try to make sure that we're getting a – everything in and right they're teaching us step by step how to work the robot how to get a feel for the controls and how to switch that up and just getting lots of practice and hours and and to make sure that we can work no matter what like so i can work with a co-pilot if another co-pilot isn't there or i could switch to co-pilot or another driver could come in and stuff like that so we can be more we have backup plans and contingencies for we still have like a depth drive team 
to say. And we also do specialty practices where we do certain things like spread obstacles around the field, see how far we can shoot from, make sure like, oh, you only have this much time to go uh, shoot this many power cells and stuff like that. All right. So, uh, again, we still have some more questions, but I'm going to now cue Tyler in for ad number two of the day. You can probably guess who it is, uh, but it's our awesome sponsor, Striker. So I'm going to have Tyler talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, sellout number two of the day, right? So, no, we really do appreciate uh, Striker for their awesome support. They've had this season uh, all the way through. Really, it, it has truly helped us transform a lot of what we're doing here at FUN, and uh, we really do thank them for that. But uh, if you guys are looking for uh, things moving in the future, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty going on right now. Uh, but you know what is certain is that Striker is a phenomenal company who truly does care about people in first and actually wants to employ people being in first, wants to pay them really well and wants to help them support them in their first journey as well, too. So if you go to careers.striker.com, you can find out more. Uh, there is a forward slash first one specifically, but they have a lot more you can look up in regards to uh, internships moving forward, which, you know, of course, with COVID, there's a lot of weird stuff going on, uh, but rotational programs. Uh, and, of course, if you're looking at starting your career, if you're coming out of college or, or high school, want to work on uh, some of their assembly area, they have some of the cleanest shops I have ever seen, and I have toured uh, multiple dozens of shops before. Super cool place. Uh, or if you're midway in your career, and you're like, hey, I need a change. I want a company that actually cares about me being in first. Go check out Striker. Go see what they have to offer. Hundreds of careers uh, all around uh, North America, actually, and some around the world. So it's not just in the Michigan area. They are all over the world. So lots of cool stuff with them. So thanks a lot to Striker, uh, who is continually uh, making stuff, uh, cool stuff. We talked about in a different show how they're making uh, emergency relief beds. Uh, over a 1,000 a day of those are going out to hospitals right now. What a great company who, uh, who is truly making a difference. So once again, go to careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. Awesome. So thank you, Stryker, again. And I guess for our guests, I'm going to ask, what's next for you guys? Obviously, while the first season might be over and the world's a little bit up in the air, what are your plans for next year, either on fir- uh, on your first team, uh, whether you're going to college, all that stuff? What's what's in the cards for you guys next? Uh, as for our team, we registered for WV Rocks. Um, that's a competition that's pretty close to us. Uh, my favorite off-season competition. I love it, and it's just a good time. Uh, and that would be our first competition we compete at, so we really hope that goes on so we can get to see what our robot can do. Uh, as for me, um, I'll be going to college in August and dealing with that. <laughs> um, I'll probably be helping out with our competitions and our team a little bit, um, trying to help out with that. And obviously being a member of FUN, trying to help out with FUN too. Mm-hmm. Definitely good luck in college. First year is a bit of an adjustment, especially now, but I'm sure you'll do just fine. And Aiden, how about you? What's uh, what's on deck? Well, what's on deck is just another year at high school, just another new year on the team and hoping to uh, actually uh, maybe uh, do more for the team and stuff like that, become a bigger part of the team and uh, step in for all those seniors that are leaving. Sounds awesome. Well, thank you very much uh, to our guests who came in, Alex and Aiden. You guys were fantastic to have. It was great to learn more about your team and about how you do things in Ohio. Uh, So thank you to everyone who's tuned in today. If you want more first robotics in your life and you like what we do, all we ask is that you let others know about the show and that this is the place to go for more FRC content uh, in your life. If you've got a few bucks to share, we do appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand. Are delighted to have you on board. So... While this is our last shallow dive show of the 2020 Finite Recharge, Infinite Recharge season, Fun has a ton of content that's going to be coming out during the off-season to get you your first robotics fix. So please keep checking in on our Discord, our Chief Delphi, and other social media platforms of your choice because there are going to be shows that you're not going to miss out on. Tomorrow, we've got the Catathon. On Wednesday, there's the second Tech Challenge inaugural tournament. On Sunday, there's the second Robotics Competition uh, Simulator Tournament. So there's a lot of stuff happening, even this week alone, uh, to get you your first robotics fix. So, yes, before we wrap this up again, huge thanks to Team 48. And on behalf of myself, our guests, our producer Tyler, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and thank our moderators in chat as well. So, all right, everyone, it's been great. Stay home, stay safe, and take care. Catch you later. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.